Hi everyone and welcome to this new episode talking about how to do a charged jump. And if you don't know what a charged jump is, it's when you hold down the key and the longer you hold down the key, the further you'll jump or higher you'll jump rather. So let's get started by taking a look at how we actually achieve a timed charged jump. So here I am in the first person template. I haven't done anything else to it. And inside the first person character, we have the jump ability. And the jump is currently set on our graph here to trigger the jump when it's started and to stop jumping when it's completed. So the first step we need to do is break down what we need to do into various steps. So the first step is we need to just make it so when we release the key, it jumps. Okay, so not worried about the timings or anything like that. We break down the, ch the, the, the challenge into more manageable steps and these are important because you want to make these manageable and measurable so this is quite easy one to do because we want to just say hey when i release the key jump so here we have the jump input action and if i expand it open we can see a lot more going on and all i'm going to do here is change it so that jump here doesn't happen on started but happens on completed instead so let's get rid of the stop jumping i'm going to disconnect my started with my alt click and plug that into completed and then hit compile. Now what I should see as my test scenario is the game should make my character jump when I release the space bar, which it does. Brilliant. Next is modifying the actual jump height. Now the jump height is modified via a setting in the character movement component. So in that component, you go over to the right hand side details panel and you'll find at the jumping section jump Z velocity. So this is how much velocity is applied to your character to add Z direction. And so it's set here to 420. Okay, so let's call that our minimum jump. So if we just tap the key, that's what we're going to jump. But our maximum is going to be a lot higher. Let's say it's going to be, say, 1600. Okay, so four times that roughly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very handy thing that we see on our input action called elapsed seconds. So elapsed seconds is how much time has happened between started and completed. And it can be very useful for things such as this, where you want to know how much time has passed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the elapsed seconds here, and I want to normalize this, because I want to make this as flexible as possible. And which is your goal when you're making games is to make the code as flexible as possible in order to make it life a lot easier for you down the line. So what we're going to do is normalize this to a range. So I go normalize to range. And what this node does, it takes a value in and it'll clamp it, not clamp it rather, it'll squish it down in between min and maximum. So if I put in a maximum of two seconds, that means if I hold it down for two seconds, the output here will be one, because one is the maximum. If I hold it down for 0.5 seconds, it will output 0.25, because 0.5 is a quarter of the way between zero and two. Now, bear in mind, if we were to hold it for longer than two seconds, this would actually output a value greater than one, which we don't want. We want to clamp it between zero and one. Otherwise, the player could hold down the key indefinitely and be able to jump freely as many as high as they want. So what we're going to do is to take the return value here and just simply clamp it with clamp float. So it keeps it in between zero and one for us. Now, again, we want to break down into manageable steps. So let's let's uh, do a little test scenario to see if that value is correct. So I'm just going to put a little print string in. And we're going to print out my clamped float there. So what we should see in here is my jump key will trigger and output a value between zero and one. So if I hold down for two seconds, it gives me a value of one. If I just tap it, we get a small fraction of a time value. Okay. So that's working as intended, which is excellent. So the next part is I need to make it so we can increase our jump velocity. So we know how to change the jump velocity. That is via the character movement and set jump Z velocity. And that will have to happen before the jump. For obvious reasons, we need it to change the jump before we do the jump. 
But where are we going to get this value from? Now, there's a few ways you can do this. And it depends on how much of a curvature you want to have with the value. So if we want to just have a linear interpolation between the two 0 and 1 values, we can do a lerp. So a lerp like this. And the value coming from the clamp would be in the alpha. So we move it down to alpha. And then put the end value in the jump z velocity. And as I said, this is linear. So if I would put in 420 as the minimum, which is the A value, and in here, we're going to do four times that. So I'm going to do 420 multiplied by four. It'll give me the, the result. And that lerp, as I said, is a linear interpolation. So there's no like extra weighting to the beginning or the end to the jump height. But that will do the job. So let's take a look at that in game. So if I hold down the key, hold down for two seconds, we get a much higher jump if I were to just tap it. And it works while you're running as well. Whoops. So uh, that is how we can do it with a linear interpolation. Now you may want to do it with a curved interpolation. So rather than having a straight line between 420 and 1680, we can have it curved. And for that, we're gonna have to have a curve. So in our content browser, we're gonna right click and go to miscellaneous and go to curve. And it's gonna ask us what type of curve we're gonna make. And we wanna do a curve float, because that's what we're dealing with at the moment is floats. So let's do a float and we'll call it CV curve and we'll call this jump velocity. Okay, and the way the curves work is you insert keys by either right clicking and doing add key or using your middle mouse button to add a key. And we, because we've normalized it between zero and one, we're gonna have at least two keys. One is gonna be set to zero, zero. So if you select it, you can actually change the values up top left here to zero, zero. And the second key is gonna set to one, one. And so this is a linear interpolation. This is what the lerp is doing. So this is kind of pointless to do it like this because the lerp does exactly this job. The benefit of a curve is to, in fact, add curves to it. So what we can do here is we can select our keys, right click on them, and we can choose auto. Now you can see there's a curvature to it. And we can grab the handles of the curves and manipulate them how we see fit. This is all well and good. But what's more important is probably adding another key into it. So if I were to add another key, and again, we're going to right click on it, auto. I'm gonna bring that out here. And just curvature of that. Something like this. Now, what this tells me is it's going to give me a more priority towards the higher numbers because it's going to reach the higher numbers quicker. So before 0.5, which is here, would have given us a smaller value, would have given us 0.5. But now 0.5 has given us a much higher value of 0.8. So it's a lot, lot larger. So it prioritize the higher values. And obviously, if you want it the other way around, Oops, you can just move the key here and now prioritize the smaller numbers. So 0 0.5 is now going to be equal to 0 0.1.5, roughly. But I want it the other way around, so I'm going to put it back there. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll do. So once we've done your curve, we can close that. And now on our character, we now need to use that instead of the lerp here. So to make use of the curve, we have to go down to our variables and add our jump curve to our variable list. And we're just gonna set that to a curve float. And you want the object type curve float. When you compile that, you should be able to choose what jump curve you wanna use and you should find loads of them, but your one is CV jump velocity, but this one. You'll see a little preview of it in a thumbnail as well. 
So what I want to do now, instead of using this lerp, is I want to evaluate the curve value. So I'm going to drag out the curve, get value, and you'll see in here, get float value. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to plug in the return value into my in time there. So now the value is being adjusted. Again, because we're normalized, it's being adjusted to fit uh, between uh, zero and one still, which means I can just plug that straight into my LERP and it will now give me the mix between the two values here. So I'm adjusting that zero to one ratio. So again, go back into testing. I'm gonna get a much higher jump for very little time. So it depends on how you want to prioritize it for your game. And that will involve a lot of testing and, and player feedback to get the right adjustment that you want. So there you have it. We've made a jump using a charge jump ability. However, there's lots more we can do to it. First of all, what I want to do next is I want to add a UI element to the screen. So you can see that charge meter building up as we're holding down the key. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members who are supporting the channel. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.